Okay, boys and girls, this lesson is going to tell you how you're going to draw your own Mondrian composition and then apply the primary colours and then the strips. So I'm just going to put this little example to the side. Every one of you are going to get a sheet of white paper and a ruler, sharp pencil, and you're going to get primary colours, yellow, red and blue with some black as well. So we're going to use the same colours that Piet Mondrian used himself. Now if you want some assistance I also have this this worksheet and it gives you a starting guide on how to draw your composition just like Piet Mondrian. So you can design your own over this or you can actually turn it over and use the grid that's here and create your very own. So you plan, you know, begin with the end in mind as to what you want to do. I'm going to go straight into mine and what we're doing is we're drawing only vertical and horizontal lines so nothing is to be diagonal at a slant and vertical lines go up and down so they're nice and strong okay horizontal lines go side by side so they're calm lines side by side so I'm just going to create my my Mondrian composition Composition is a word that we use in art as well as English language. I'm just going to break that one up and I'm going to bring this one here. Bring that one down and I'm divide that up. So you can see what I'm doing, vertical and horizontal lines only. And when I'm happy with that, I'm going to get my, my paintbrush. And you can see the style of paintbrush that I'm using. I'm using a square edged one so I can get that nice finished texture. We're going to start with the lightest colour first. So I'm going to start with yellow and I'm going to decide where I want to paint the yellows first and that's what I'm going to do. Paint the yellows. So if I wanted to make this one yellow I'd pop this. You see I'm going to try and keep within those lines. This is what's so great about this brush. Now what you will find is that you will need to go over this at least twice. So let it dry before you give it a second coat so you get a nice strong flat yellow. Okay, so we're using these pure primary colours. Remember the primary colours make all the other colours for us in the world. And when I'm happy with that, and I've got that one in, I'm going to let that sit to the side and I'm going to continue and I'd want to make another one yellow. So imagine that I filled this one in yellow and then I'm going to decide where I want to put my red. That would be my next colour that I'll go to and then move up to red and then through to blue and then eventually if I wanted to have some black squares but I'm also going to leave a couple of the squares white just the way Mondrian did and that doesn't need any colour whatsoever so once I've got this finished so you can imagine that I've got all these colours already in my three primaries black and white so I'm just going to make one little square here so you can see by adding in Now every time you change now to go to a new colour, always make sure that your brush is clean. Do the hand test as well. You can change your water out so it's clean, but also test the brush after you've washed it on the back of your hand. And if you still see colour, it means that your water's dirty. Get up and change it. And then test it again. If your brush is clean, then go into the pot. Because what you want to do is make sure that you keep these colours nice and clean and pure for all the other students to use, as well as yourself. So once you start mixing in colours together, you start muddying them up. Now, when I've got all my three primary colours in and my black and white, and I've set it to dry, the very next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the black bars. And instead of trying to paint the black bars in, which is very, very difficult to get a nice crisp line, we're going to use black paper strips. So with the black paper strips, we're going to, with a glue stick, we're going to add them over the top. So if you look at this example, you can see how crisp, these weren't hand painted, these were actually done with paper strips. So you're going to do exactly the same, but you have to allow your painting to be dry, or if you've got some of the areas dry. So I'm going to just show you here, because my paint's still slightly wet, I'm not going to glue them down, but you're just going to see how perfect it looks when you've got it. So when I run this one across from here to here, I'm going to glue it down when it's dry 
and when it's completely dry, just turn it round and you see where we've got the little tail, we're just going to nip that tail off with a pair of scissors so we're getting it nice and neat. The tail that you've cut off could still be used for another area. So don't waste, don't just keep using new strips. Use what you've got to accommodate it. Now I'm going to continue finishing this and you're going to start with yours. Remember boys and girls, ruler. So you're going to demonstrate how to use the ruler. You're going to demonstrate to do vertical lines that are up and down, horizontal lines that go side to side, and then you're going to demonstrate how you can create a Mondrian composition using the pure primary colours and black paint, and finally add on your paper strips. So I'm going to continue this and have this one finished for you. Okay, now it's your turn. Let's go make some art.